In TV news, as in politics, there's one thing you must never, ever do. It's this. Our fourth story tonight, the politics of waiting. President Bush is warning Democrats they must not wait, but must act now to bail out Wall Street the way he wants to, or the economy will be, well, even worse. But on a Republican blog, one consultant is urging Republicans in tight races to vote against the bailout and attack Democrats who vote for it. Quote, God himself couldn't have given rank-and-file Republicans a better opportunity to create political space between themselves and the administration. Let this be the political establishment, Bush Republicans in the White House, plus Democrats in Congress, saddling the taxpayers with hundreds of billions in debt, more than the Iraq war, conjured up in a single weekend and enabled by Pelosi, by the way, while principled Republicans say no and go to the country with a stinging indictment of the majority in Congress. A bailout may be inevitable, but so too can be the political benefit for congressional Republicans if played correctly. This open call for Republicans to vote based not on, say, country first, coming from Patrick Ruffini, a former RNC staffer whose website says it's a joint project with a veteran of the McCain campaign who was suspended this spring for circulating an anti-Obama web video. Right in the middle of the bailout battle is Massachusetts Congressman Barney Frank, Chairman of the Financial Services Committee. Congressman, thanks for your time tonight. You're welcome. With or without Democratic revisions, if Democrats pass this bailout, what's to stop this guy's strategy from working in November? Will you insist that McCain get on board as well? Well, not McCain, um, but Speaker Pelosi is insisting that there be a significant number of Republican votes for this. Um, look, you can't stop scurrilous people like that hack. Uh, from doing this. I think that uh, a large number of people accept uh, that you should be responsible. But um, Speaker Pelosi has said that if this is going to pass, it should be in a bipartisan way, partly because we're talking about the country here, and it's not healthy to the country. You know, part of this is about psychology to have this done in a partisan way. It's also the case that uh, we are changing the bill very substantially from what the president sent in. The president sent in a bill. Um, that was a, a kind of a Dick Cheney wish list. I'm in charge and I'll do whatever I want. Nobody can, can stop me. We are putting in a number of uh, changes that will uh, restrain CEO compensation, that will control the uh, unchecked uh, executive power. Uh, one of the things that you were talking about in the previous segment, very important, is how do you set the price? Well, nobody can be confident of that now, of what you're buying. So for that reason, we, Senator Dodd and I, are working on very strong oversight language so that literally every transaction that they engage in, every time they buy something, it will be reported to an independent oversight board. The price that they paid for will be made clear so that in the process, if there does appear a pattern of overpaying or underpaying, that's going to come out as, these inform as this information is made very public. But Congressman Frank, on that very point, if you don't know the mechanism by which the federal government is going to try to evaluate the value of these bad debts and bad loans, how can the I mean, how can anybody support? Well, that? we will know that. First of all, literally every transaction, as soon as it is completed, will have to be reported. We will know the price they paid. You can infer an awful lot about how they got there from we'll looking at the price. We will know. So if they paid way too little, then you're going to have other people say, well, wait a minute, uh, uh, we, we would have bought that for more. If they pay too much, you're going to have a flood of people saying, well, buy mine. Secondly, we will have an oversight board that will have the power to say to them, please explain to us what the process is. It's an independent board that will have its own staff and its own budget. And they will have the power, unlike in the president's bill, to say to them, all right, would you now explain to us how you are deciding, A, what to buy or where to invest and how much to pay for it. Well, let's talk a little oversight now as far as the price tag. Are you confident that $700 billion is accurate? No, no one is. It's, it's an educated guess. By the way, going back to that uh, Republican hack you quoted, uh, the notion that it's going to cost more than the Iraq war is, uh, is nonsense because we are talking about X hundred billion of assets we're going to buy. Clearly, the great majority of that will be recovered. Whether it's 80 percent or 70 percent, we don't know. But this is going to be uh, uh, not much more than 20 percent at most of the Iraq war. I can understand why they keep trying to hide the but cost of that But isn't that the war. delicate balancing act? I mean, if the government, over, if the government uh, overpays and the taxpayer gets stuck with the losses, right, because you won't recoup the money that you laid out, if the government underpays, or if the government uh, essentially says to the banks, fine, we'll give you a nickel on no, the dollar, then the a, banks are going to suffer. That's not a delicate balance on the point I was talking about. I am not talking about whether we're going to break even or not. I am saying that a substantial amount will be recovered. We're going to pay. Whether we underpay or overpay will affect the amount. But 
there's nothing like 700 billion or whatever 100 billion is originally put at risk that's going to be paid out. We're clearly going to get more than 50 percent back. So I'm just dealing with that silly comparison uh, to the Iraq war. Fair um, enough, though. Are there any guarantees that you or Secretary Paulson or President Bush can give that uh, this will help the economy and make the economy in better shape? No. Um, I, we hope it will. Look, here's the issue. In the first place, I'm not in the business of giving guarantees. This is a problem that was created by the prevalent right-wing philosophy of not regulating. These people said to us, Dick Armey, the Republican leader during the 12 years that they were in control for much of it, the markets are smart and the government is dumb. Ronald Reagan, 28 years ago, said, government's not the answer to our problem, government's the problem. And they unfortunately had the political power to resist those of us who wanted what we thought was sensible regulation. We now have a terrible problem that was created by bad private sector decisions carried out without regulation. I understand that. We have to undo that. We are committed, by the way, next year to putting in place the kind of regulation that will stop this from recurring. And that's one guarantee we can give people, that we will be able to stop this from being a recurrent pattern. Now we have to deal with it. Unfortunately, the victims of these bad decisions won't just be the people who made them. They will be people trying to get auto loans and the people trying to sell cars. There will be people trying to refinance houses. There will be people trying to buy furniture or sell furniture. So we do have to do something. But we are determined to do it in a way that gives some direct benefit, not just to the people who made the mistakes in the first place, but to a lot of other people. Congressman Barney Frank from Massachusetts. Congressman, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. You're welcome.